Hello. If you're like me, you're probably sheltering in place or working from home as a result of the current COVID-19 crisis. And that's okay. And I actually figured I'd take this time to do a number of videos on a various number of topics regarding that crisis, including some DIY videos. Today's really fun one is going to be about DIY hand sanitizer and a few tips and tricks you guys may not know. I'm Dean, and this is the Alberta Bushcrafter Channel. Okay, first things first, I want to thank all my viewers and subscribers for sticking around. I know it's been a while, but yeah, there's a number of videos coming up soon. Secondly, I want to thank every one of you out there who does realize that you don't need 144 rolls of toilet paper, 10 or 15 cases of pasta and sauce, uh, 10 or 15 cases of ramen noodles, and 80 bottles of hand sanitizer to make it through the current COVID-19 crisis. As far as the rest of you go, oh, just plain quit panic shopping and uh, take a breath. What is hand sanitizer? It is alcohol. Number one ingredient is alcohol. And there's usually a few other additives. Normally that's some kind of emollient or moisturizer uh, to keep the alcohol from drying out your hands. So that's going to become important. That's actually it. Some of the stuff like Purell here has other agents that gel it, but you can get by on a lot less, and I'll show you how. What kind of alcohol can you use in hand sanitizer? There's a lot of misinformation out there. I looked through like 20 or 30 different articles out there, and a lot of it's okay, a lot of it's not. So, for starters, the, there are two types of alcohol you can have in sanitizer. One is ethanol, ethyl alcohol. The second is propanol or isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol. Those are the two. And uh, if you see anything that says methyl hydrate or methanol, avoid it like the plague. That stuff's actually a bit of a contact poison. It can make you very sick and even kill you. Secondly, ethylene glycol. It's a minor additive in some hand sanitizers, but the idea that most hand sanitizers are made mostly from ethylene glycol is an utter myth. The stuff's not even that effective. All right, so that's ingredient one. Second ingredient is where it gets tricky because your second ingredient is something like, yeah, I may have the last bottle on the planet. It's aloe vera gel or something like it. Now, here's the thing. A lot of aloe vera, uh, you're not going to find it on the shelves. I have not seen it on the shelves for a month. I do know that when some of the big supermarkets bring in the really big, huge aloe leaves, which you can crush and extract gel from there, um, they're gone right away. And apparently there doesn't seem to be many signs that it's going to get any better anytime soon. But that's okay, because there's other ingredients you can use. Here's one. Found it quite serendipitously. This is solar cane. This is a burn lotion. It's a soothing gel and that should be a little bit of a key because the gel in the soothing gel is aloe vera. Now another thing you can do, which I have played around with a lot, is you can use for the uh, moisturizing component, if you've got your hands on glycerin or glycerol, use it. It's acceptable. See, what you're adding to the alcohol is just what moisturizes your hands. You can use stuff like Glycomed or Glycerin hand cream or something like this. This is called Camille hand cream, aloe vera and avocado oil. The thing is, they don't mix quite as well. And you may have to keep shaking them. But we'll show you that in a minute. Okay, what do you need to put this all together? You usually need um, measuring cups or spoons. It's nice to have ones that are marked like these ones with both imperial and metric measures. But that may not be as important as you think here. You'll also need some kind of mixing bowl or uh, 
cup. Uh, you'll need a whisk and you'll also need some kind of bottles. Now these bottles are from my camping supply cabinet and they're very handy. You can also use an old sanitizer bottle and that's good. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol. This is rubbing alcohol up here in Canada. You can use this. That's the interesting You can use this, but you've got to mix it on a 7 to 1 ratio. That's 7 parts or more alcohol to 1 part aloe vera or equivalent. Now this stuff's really easy because if you want to get over 60% alcohol, this is 91%. Uh, that stuff's actually really easy because it's two to one to get over 60. If you go three to one, it's a better sanitizer. I'll actually have some ratios posted. Why am I using ratios instead of actual milliliters and so on? Well, you can measure them out, but I actually did the math for you. Now, my favorite for making this stuff, not for drinking though, this is do not drink this stuff. This is yeah, Everclear. It is still available where a lot of this stuff is not. And if you're ever wondering what proof is to percent alcohol by volume, um, proof is double the percent alcohol. So if it's 190 proof, this is 95%. This gives you the most versatility in making sanitizer. If you do a 2 to 1 ratio, it's in the 60s. If you do a 5 to 1 ratio, it's 80% and anywhere in between. Again, I'll have those values posted. Now, why do I actually go by ratios instead of specific measurements? Because you never know, you might have one of these with no markings on it. So we're gonna start with the simplest one. So it's actually just, as I said, this is the 70% we're gonna be using. That's a teaspoon. Sorry, that's a tablespoon. Level it off. Sometimes helps to wet the inside of your measuring spoon as well. It just helps the aloe vera slide out better. And what you want to do is open it up. Seven of these. See, keep in mind, I am not one, I'm not worried about overflowing the uh, alcohol on this. Because the alcohol is the important ingredient. Actually, I have to give this a shot and get that spoon cleaned off. Then all you do, get your whisk. I have to like a flat whisk. You may have to do this for a few moments. Okay, you finished mixing. All you need to do Get a funnel, pour away. This is a go tube I'm using. Now take a quick look. This stuff is not as nice and thick as a regular sanitizer, but it will do the job. We're going to skip the 91%. I don't have much of that left. And besides, this stuff's better to use, Everclear. So we're going to do a batch of that just as quick. Again, remember, this one is, I'm going to do a 4 to 1 ratio, which puts this in about the 75% range. This is going to be a strong hand sanitizer. I'm going to use my regular aloe vera. Even at 3 to 1, this stuff is going to work wonders. So once again, get the whisk going. I find the aloe vera itself takes a little bit longer to mix. Now, The last one, I'm not going to 
have you sit through another one. Also, give this stuff a shake once in a while because it tends to separate a tiny bit. Here's another one I had made, and this one's interesting. This is the same Everclear, but this has four to one ratio of this hand cream in it. And I'm not going to put you guys through that, but this stuff, actually I like it the best out of the bunch because it's really good on the hands, but it doesn't mix well. These glycerin creams, uh, they tend to be a little oily, even though they say they're non-greasy. Yeah, they're still a bit oily and they don't always mix very well. As you can see, you know, there's a bit of, you may, may not see it there. Yeah, there's a bit of uh, globs of it in the bottom. But this stuff still works in a pinch, especially if you go four to one or five to one with the Everclear. Um, it's not pretty, it's not 100% dissolved, but guess what? It actually feels really nice on the hands and sanitizes as well. That this stuff isn't clear, this is uh, four to one, ever clear in aloe vera. This is that 70% isopropanol that I mixed up earlier. They're not thick, they're not silky like Purell. And that's the point. This is DIY sanitizer. This stuff, the Purell, you're not going to see in stores for a while. Um, I actually work in the healthcare field and there are a lot of companies that are in overdrive right now making as much alcohol for sanitizer as they can. Problem is that's all going to essential medical personnel by the way. Again the problem is um, that's actually very very watery stuff. It does the job wonderfully but again um, you won't see this stuff in stores for a while. So that's where making your own is essential. Knowing how to do this because I mean, once your own stock, unless you buy 80 bottles, once your own stock runs out, um, yeah, that's where a bit of DIY skill comes in handy. So that's all I have to say about that. I want to thank everyone for watching and putting up with me. Um, please like, share, comment in a civil manner, and subscribe. And uh, everyone stay safe out there. I'm Dean. And this is the Alberta Bushcrafter Channel. Right. And if you enjoyed that video, the next video in the series is going to be about breath masks. Stay tuned.